And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Soraka Braum. We played a Soraka Braum deck a few weeks ago and it did quite well. And we got a very similar version here, a new version uh, for it. Um, I like this combination with these two champions, Soraka and Braum. Um, we're going to be winning most of our games with Starspring. So we're, we're another Starspring deck, but we're not just using Tom Kench. We're heading on over to Freljord instead of Bilgewater, because Freljord's got a lot of good stuff for us. So basically, the, the reason why Braum works so well in this deck is because Braum has regeneration. And whenever you uh, regenerate Braum, then that counts as healing a damaged ally. And so that goes towards leveling up Soraka and also you know drawing a card, because that is healing um, an ally whenever it regenerates. And of course, when that happens, healing your allies is what you need for Starspring to be able to win the game. We need to be able to heal our allies 22 plus times. And and uh, Braum you know, just works with that. So you, know, you challenge something that's like three power, Braum heals for three, and so therefore that's three for Starspring right there. Plus, Freljord gives you another great regeneration threat with Scar Maiden Reaver having Overwhelm and Regeneration. This card's awesome in this kind of deck. Again, another way to, um, you know, regenerate, heal your uh, allies for the Starspring. All right, so besides that, Freljord's given us some, some Kindly Tavern Keeper, healing allies there. It's giving us Avalanche, which is an awesome spell for keeping, um, you know, uh, keeping aggro decks at bay, plus dealing damage to our own units to be able to regenerate them. So that works perfectly. And then we can also buff our stuff up. We got Omen Hawk and Mench of the Stones in here, um, just giving buffs to our own units, which which is pretty important with both these champions. Right? Like when you're attacking with a 1 6 or 2 7 Soraka, people don't really care about that and they don't block, right? Well, what if you turn that 2 7 into a 4 9 with Mentor? Um, and then your mentor dies, and then you get some gems, and now it's like a, a five, six, seven, nine. You know, like now they have to start blocking your Soraka. It's it's suddenly a seven nine, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so they they suddenly have to start blocking that thing. Obviously, Brom is a lot better if you buff this thing up, buff up the power and everything. Brom's going to be a lot better, and you know, Omen Hawk also just is just kind of like a blocker right away for us against those aggro decks, but buffs these things up. We do have a good amount of card advantage in here. Soraka usually draws a lot of cards, and then we have cards like Pill, Cascade, Guiding Touch that also draw cards. So it's okay to have like a, a cheap thing to, to um, make sure you have an early blocker. Um, so yeah, so those, those kind of buff cards are pretty important here. Also, you can hit um, some of these other cards, like hitting Scar Maiden Reaver, make a, a bigger Overwhelm Regeneration, awesome. Alpha Wild Claw, same thing. Now the other the other thing that Freljord gives us is Feel the Rush, and Feel the Rush is great with these two champions, Braum and Soraka, both as ten tens. That's incredible because you got to block the ten ten Soraka, right? And then but then uh, whenever it attacks, you'll just be able to heal it back. And obviously the ten ten Braum, you get to challenge things, and then it regenerates, and that gives you a whole lot of options for your your Star Springer. You know, like a whole lot of um, stats for your Star Spring. Pretty awesome. All right, so that's our deck. It's pretty cool. Let's get to it. We're going to go play our five games in Ranked with Soraka Brahm. All right, playing against some Overwhelm. Well, I don't know if you call this Overwhelm. I just feel the rush. Big stuff. All right, so feel the rush is going to be, going to be pretty good against us. <laughs> They're going to have the means to kill our... like. Soraka and Braum are both really hard to kill, except for two, there's two ways, two things that, that kill our Soraka and our Braum. One is Shadow Isles, with having Vengeance and Ruination. And that's that's probably the thing that we want to see the least, or like Vengeance, Ruination decks. But then also, to like, you know, uh, Targon can take care of them with like, if they um, invoke some Celestial Obliterate cards and then use those. They're out there. So they can, but it's it's really but that's you know that requires a lot. And uh, vengeance and ruination though are probably the things I want to see the least. But the good news here is they probably don't have too good of answers for my star spring. Let's see. I am here to help. Okay. 
Go hard. I don't think I've seen this deck playing Go hard before, but I'm pretty happy about that. I don't I don't think they're going to be able to draw four Go hards, right? So I'm not even worried about Packer Bag. So like if they draw more one mana, drain one. That's that's good for me because that's not a very good card. Uh, the question is, is do I throw Soraka in front of Avaros and Sentry? And that answer is yes, because we got Star Spring. Take the one. I'm glad I didn't play the Mentor of the Stones, though, into that go hard. Oh no, they're playing Crumble? Just as I'm over here saying they're not going to be able to kill my landmark. They just have Crumble? What's going on? Looking into the future, I see purple. I've never seen this deck play Crumble either. <laughs> What's going on? I'm not going to commit another Braum to the board for um, Ruination's sake. Could have used the two mana with the Guiding Touch, but I decided to save that so that I could use two mana to turn on Nightfall Pill Cascade when needed. Alright, so if they're going to throw... Trundle in front of Ruination. I'll throw Braum. No. Good luck. Have fun. Take I'm making the Omen Hawk also bigger than Avalanche. Of course, that's also doing the most damage I can to them. Yeah, Hawk Dive Buff and Hawk. I like spreading out my threats against a Vengeance deck. I don't like just buffing up, you know, like, one thing against, against a Vengeance deck. All right. Now we got our Star Spring. We got Regen with Star Spring. Not all of us are immortal. Yep. See, that's that's why we buffed up the Omen Hawk, so it survives as well. Oh, I should I should troll or I should I should pill cascade that three three. I should pill cascade the three three. Because I was kind of planning on... Yeah, I should have pill cascaded the 3-3. Sorry, I was, I was a little slow there, thinking about my play. Because I think I could maybe go Soraka's Wish. That would level up Soraka. But maybe that maybe that's not necessary, actually. Uh, so this is supposed to be at 6 right now, so it's going to go up 5. If I try that... I'm worried about the 1 damage things. Let's go like this. Live with I -E, my own. Alright, so I wanted to level up the Soraka, make sure we get the card draw. So stars we just played Star Spring, it's already 12 out of 22. <laughs> Those things will be 10 tens. Think 
This is rough that I don't get to play Astral Protection also. But I think if I just have Astral Protection, that won't be good enough. Oh, no, actually, that would have worked. Never mind. Astral Protection plus Pale Cascade on the Brawn when they attack with this would have just won me the game. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, like that would have just won me the game. Let's talk about your dad. Yeah. I need to do, I need I need to have a little bit more time to do some math. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could have just won this game. And now we're going to die to an atrocity. But I could have just won it. I can't stop dying to atrocity. Can't stop to die into atrocity. All right, well that was. This should have been a win if I would have just had like ten more seconds. If I would have just spent well, like ten more seconds to think about it, because uh, you know I could have made the the Braum eleven health and blocked a ten power with eleven health, so then it would have you know taken ten and it would have survived at one, and then I would have healed ten and we would have gone from twelve to twenty two. So that that would have been game. This world has such great potential. But now, either Atrocity or Vengeance. Or Ruination, really. If they have any of those Shadow Isles cards. We are kind of done for. By Starlight. Ha! This is fun, yes? That's one of the many cards that makes me not win this anymore. We are playing Hush. I could like draw into Hush. One smack will do. Go no further. Well, that's. That's a thing, I suppose. So, yeah, Sunburst is great for this matchup. I don't, I don't think we really need Sunburst against any other deck, but I, yeah, Sunburst is awesome against this specific deck. I, I should have already won this game though. After that Feel the Rush, because they're tapped out with Feel the Rush, and I should, I should have won this game. All right, so that's just gonna happen sometimes with you know, decks. Are, you know, that's I just play you know all these different decks all the time, and uh, you know, first game. I didn't see that line until it was too late. So I'm sorry about that. I should have won that game if, uh, if I just saw that line just a little bit earlier. So Elise Anivia should be dealing a good amount of damage to us. Um, but again, this is another Vengeance, you know, Vengeance Ruination deck. Vengeance Ruination decks just aren't that popular. It's, it's unfortunate that we're running into two in a row. Kind of unfortunate. Okay, 
I like seeing some spiders. It's good for my avalanches. The winter's claw strikes. That's pretty good. Some avalanches. Alright, back to six. Six and six, so we're even up with that glimpse beyond drawing two. To heal and protect. We have some big wow claws. Big wow claws. That's pretty nice also. 5-6 overwhelm regen into 8-7 overwhelm. Like, this is a good curve. They don't really look like they are a ruination kind of deck playing stalking shadows and like all these like earlier things that we've seen. They kind of look more like a they who enter our deck. Break the strong, slaughter the weak. Not and ready. Well, I can't I can't really attack anyway. It's a curious attack by them. Save the Only scratch. Brom. Brom. Winter take you. I think that, that was a tilt attack. That could be. My life for Avarosa. I love the board music on this. I know some people don't. I love the music on this board. Caretaker. How can Brom help? Yeah, they look like a they who endure deck. <laughs> okay, I thought they were maybe killing my Soraka. But, you know, like a. Which they still may, like a Vile Feast or something like that. But I still figure that was a good play. Hopefully they do not kill Soraka. Obviously I wish I had one more mana to protect it. Okay, good. Must they have a go hard. Good. That levels up Soraka. The two regens. Uh, we'll do you last. So we'll just go like this. What's up, Starspring? How you doing? So I'm not going to let them play a Ruination, right? Like, we're going immediately to attacks, obviously. And that'll be game. GG's. The heavens rejoice. Ooh. See, this is the kind of matchup I like. I think. You know, they have the Nexus damage that could hurt us, but we have some great blockers. We have Avalanche. 
you know, like Avalanche and then these blockers, that, like, that's a great, you know, turn three, four, five. Um, a Guiding Touch helps heal our Nexus. This is a good hand. Right, just pass the turn. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna play that Star Spring on turn two. I want to, I'm gonna want to save the spell mana. But I guess, I guess I could play it on turn two and then still have Avalanche on three. I wouldn't have Guiding Touch. Hmm. It's actually better to play it on turn three, though. Yeah, because because I play it here, and now they do something with their mana, like that. Right, because we want to give them the priority, but I can't just like pass and give them the priority because they just go back and go back to attacks. So that's that's actually just a perfect star spring. Rules are made to be broken. My buildings are people. Screaming helps not at all. I will block. <laughs> They're like, maybe not. Maybe not on that attack there. Um This is fun, yes. It means they like you. That's going to be a lot of damage. Seven for our Star Spring. Because that's the race of, you know, our Star Spring against their Nexus damage, right? So, like, it's, that's the race. So that gets us basically a third of the way there. Yeah, they're never going to kill Braum. It's just, you know, like, will Jinx be able to super mega death rocket us to death first? And they get to pull Braum with the Flame Chompers, which is awesome for them. Do they need our help? It is easy, see? Now it's a party! Oh, it is a great day for a reckoning! I am here to help. I'll double spell with these two. Whoa. I love that. That's great. You are safe with Brawl. Yeah, I mean I'll take that all day. Let's talk about your dad. I've got meat bigger than you. Guess I block here, it's only one less damage. Or it's one more damage. We'll kill that thing. They should be challenging the Braum, not challenging the Soraka. Time for the money makers. Because this is going to be so much damage for Braum to be able to regen now. This is pretty great for me. For the mighty Poro. With the power of the stars. Take heart. Live with We're at 15 purpose. now. And then another kindly tavern keeper. That's a great draw. Oh man, a take heart. That's a great draw. Stars fall. 
This is fun, yes? Take heart. Live with purpose. That's a question of, you know, Scar Maiden first or not. I think the answer is not. This allows me to go, like, Take Heart, Tavern Keeper, and Guiding Touch all together. Right, 16. They can't cast... That's the thing is, they can't cast Super Mega Death Rock. If they cast it, they lose. Do they realize that? If they play that card, they lose. Like they, they can't play it. I don't I don't know how they win from here. I, I think this game's just over. I don't, I don't think they have any outs. That Astral Protection on a Braum. <laughs> you just can't kill it anymore. It's just too big. Astral Protection, pretty sweet with Braum. Alright, so they have chosen death. They can either choose death or the blade. Oh, wait. I guess that happens. Oh, because the Braum... So the Braum regen ha happens afterwards. Happens after the Star Spring. So they get one turn. Because it goes, it goes from left to right. So Star Spring happened first. Alright, there we go. So it ended up being close. If I didn't draw that kindly Tavern Keeper, that last ta Tavern Keeper to, to gain the three. Alright, go hard. It's going to be difficult for them to kill our stuff besides Vengeance and Ruination. So let's see. Wild Claw, gone. Mentor the Stones, gone. But I love Mentor the Stones with Braum. They get to go hard and mentor the stones, but even if they do, I get all those gems, and the gems are great with Braum too. I'm gonna keep it. Get the attack token turn four. I pull the string. Chance. Mystical levitation requires concentration. Was there anybody that didn't think that mystical levitation would require concentration? Everybody's like, nah, probably you don't probably need to really concentrate for mystical levitation. That doesn't seem like anything they need to concentrate a boot. Legs. Not enough mustache. Deal me in. Who says I don't share? Thanks for giving me a 3-3. Three, three. I'll take it. And I'll re-heal the Braum. And attack for one here. I guess I should be attacking for... Three with that Poro also, shouldn't I? It wouldn't be great against like block go hard, but I should probably still be throwing it out there. I don't know. I it's it's nice just being able to have all these spells available now, these combat tricks. Keep up, keep up. Hmm. Our mountain groves are full of dangers. Probably. I know them all. Through the coral! Skip block. <clears throat> yes, double Ledros gone. I don't know what the odds of that are, but all right, Ledros gone.
Don't think I need to gem again. I think one gem's fine. I don't think they're gonna give this plus one health. There is assistance! Soraka's at three. So if I play Soraka this turn, we'll level up Soraka and draw a card, right? Because like, it'll be one heal and then draw a card for the other. So that's probably worth it. So like, and protect. I'll leave that I know I'm talking about like not overextending into Ruination, but we are drawing a card by the Soraka. So drawing card's good. Because we do, we do really overextend their uh, like vengeances, right? Like we have all these things that like, nothing can die from, like, their little damage, basically. I can wait for the gem until next turn, because we're already drawing a card with Soraka anyway. And then if I get priority at the beginning of next turn, I can, you know, gem, like, this Broadback Protector and draw a card. Or Astral Protection. So we're at 8 right now. You won't suffer long. It sure looks like a ruination. You are safe with Brawl. I understand. I should probably have these two switched. Claw. Yeah, they have the, their best possible card. There's plenty of Ugh, they don't have that card. They're in a lot of trouble, but they had it. So let's see if we can uh, still win. Pillage and burn. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. Dead in their tracks. Stay out of my way. Say your farewells. You can kind of see Puppy right there. See Puppy's chilling next to Harvey. They're talking. Yeah, block. Go ahead. There you go. Good job. Ah. Um. There you go. Bad. That block doesn't matter. I'm just going to use this Pell Cascade and draw a card, deal a couple damage. Um, do I want to play the other one too? Put him down to 12. Nah. I'll hold on to the other mana. Just in case something weird happens with the Scar Maiden Reaver, like they play a Ravenous Flock or something weird. I don't know how it's going to happen. Like I said, it would be weird. So we'll just regen more. New scar. Twelve. Yeah, you know, it's just vengeance and ruination are like they're only things that are gonna kill these two. So as long as they don't find vengeance or ruination, we're gonna be doing pretty good. They can have a leveled up twisted fate though pretty soon. How soon is it? Well, they've gotten three out of eight so far. Yeah, Twitch is kind of glitching a little bit right now. That's too bad. They did find a vengeance. I wasn't strong enough. Leave your tracks at the door. There's nothing to fear. What about fear itself? Hmm. 
All those tavern keepers. We'll take what we want. What's your hurry? Wish I had Nightfall turned on for this Pale Cascade. I just don't really like any of these options of turning on Nightfall for the Pale Cascade. Like, now I have like the Troll Chant that I for sure play. Um, because their their next go hard is gonna be a Packer Bags. So that would keep the Skarmane Reaver alive. Throw a pack your bags. Yes! Now their vengeance gone. Alright, so... Uh, one Ruination's gone, two Vengeance are gone, and two Ledros are gone. So, young. so love seeing all that. <laughs> I guess you can win them all. If I let damage happen, then my Scar Maiden goes to three health. And then it's just a little bit more difficult to keep it alive through a... Through a... Uh, Packer bags. Like, I still have Astral Protection, so it's not, like, that difficult, but... Um, level up Twisted Fate's not bad for me, right? Like, that's gonna start, you know, like, the red card, gold card, like, that kind of stuff. That's just dealing damage. That's gonna be good for me. Soak it in. It's a good draw. So we're at 15. Hopefully they don't have crumble. Open. They've already cast one Ruination. They've already cast a Vengeance and burned a Vengeance. Um, so where are we at now? 15? 16, 17? So I have Avalanche Protection and a Troll Chant. Suppose you want in on this. Oh, suppose I should leave you me. So that's twenty one. I have to have Crumble. What you doing, puppy? Harvey's laying on her back back there. Torment. It's gonna be a close one. I'm not gonna. No, I'd rather troll chant than hush. You know, yeah, I guess it, I could have like with the avalanche could have hushed the busher to kill it. Let's get to it. But I just like protecting the scar main reaver just a little bit more. So two go hards doesn't kill my scar main reaver, and this should be game. That's twenty two. Pack your bags. Not good enough. 
All right, another deck that likes to attack, which is good because we like to block. Yeah, that was impressive, like, through that Ruination. Um, definitely get rid of one of these. You know, through that Ruination and... Uh, yeah, I guess I keep the rest of these. Um, and then, you know, they also had, like, the other Vengeance to go along with the, the Ruination and, you know, still still got there. There's a kill in the air. This is mercy. Of course, regen should count as healing, because yeah, that's what you're doing. You're healing. Does death follow me or peace? Warm hearts and hot soup. This one's on the house. Oh, that's tough. You know, like I could it Like Avalanche just only kills Lucian, so we're just gonna wait on that. If they have like the the thing that makes a bunch of 1-1s, one they'll be 2-2s, two so we can avalanche them away, but they have the thing that makes a bunch of 2-2s, two then they're just going to be 1-1s. One so we don't get to avalanche that. Good. The thing that makes a bunch of 1-1s, one good. So the hope is, please, no sharp sight to save Lucian. Just let this happen. Let it happen. Yes. That's good for me. With the Lucian dying. So even if they have another thing that puts in more ephemerals, Push back the darkness. that Lucian was dead, so that's good. The heat. There are two ones should probably be attacking, but I don't know. I think it probably should be, because otherwise this Tavern Keeper is going to be a 3-3 the next turn. But I guess they value that ephemeral bonus pretty highly, which... That also makes sense. Alert the kitchen. We'll need more food. You little whiny puppy, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Really? You're gonna keep whining? You see another uh, another doggo out there. You need to go play with the little the other doggo. In case I just drew sharp sight right there, I won't challenge the Lucian. Master. Okay. So those ones will be 3-3s, three three, so we don't get to just Ruination, or sorry, just Avalanche them away. I'm still going to play Avalanche right now, though, to, to kill the Lucian, and it'll also kill the Soul Shepherd. And then I, you know, because I have a backup Avalanche I can kind of use here. So it's two Lucians down. They're not playing Hecarim. So I like that, because Hecarim's always a problem. So I like that they're not playing Hecarim. Justice will be served. So they'll be served cold. Alright, so they are out of. Could we go Braum again? Nah. Nah, I just pass. Yeah, I just pass. I could take the Nexus hit, that's not that big a deal. Banish the unworthy. No puppy. Ooh, troll chance good. Um Stand behind You block there. Troll chant. You can block there. Basically that troll chant just kinda of saved me three life. Not bad. All right, let's get some healing in. So we're gonna go from six to twelve. We're halfway there. 
All right, so Braum, eight out of ten. First we fight. We should be friends. <laughs> Braum's leveled up. Hey, what's up, Fourier? Yeah, that was a great game there. That was a very tight game. You're the Gohar player? Yeah, GG's there. Alright, Brahms leveled up. I just kind of want to pass right now. Like, we still have blockers for what they got going on. Because I, I don't really want to play Scar Maiden or, or Broadback Protector, and then they play something that kills my Brahm. Wanted to ha keep that protection available. Tremble before the winter's claw. More regen blockers. Here you are. Um. All right, so avalanche goes kill, 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 and doesn't kill any of my stuff. So we also get a mighty Poro, but that's pretty good. And my opponent thinks that's pretty good too. Four and a one. Soraka Brom's pretty good. The last time we played Soraka Braum a couple of weeks ago, also we did really well. You know, that was it was a deck of the day before, and now it's going to be another deck of the day here with that 4-1. It's under, an underrated combination, for sure. It's so hard to kill these things. It's so hard to kill Braum with, uh, with, what's it called? Braum with Astral Protection is, like, impossible to kill. And then it just regens, and you just win the games with the Star Spring. You know, like that that combination of Star Spring, Astral Protection, Braum, that's just awesome. And then you know you have your Sorakas in there being your card advantage, so you get to draw a lot of cards. So that's always good. Um, Avalanche was just an all star for us, right? Like Avalanche was just winning us games over and over again. It it was amazing, and like that Star Spring Avalanche was pretty cool, right? Like we had that one game against the discard burn deck where we, like, turn three had priority to start the turn, so then I played the Starspring on turn three, so that then they played the their Battlecaster, and then, boom, Avalanche right afterwards. That was really nice. <clears throat> no, we don't have to draw Starspring to win the game, but it's it's our main way to win the game. We also draw, like, Soraka draws a lot of cards, so, like, we, we can usually find it. It's, it's the main way to win, but you don't have to, because you can still, like, that's why we have these things, right? Like, Scar Maiden Reaver, Alpha Wild Claw, these things can beat down and attack for a, a lot, um, especially, and especially whenever we buff it up, right? Like, we have Mentor the Stones and Omen Hawk that are going to be, like, buffing stuff up, and, like, you know, Braum controls the board and everything, and, like, leveled up Braum can win games, and Level up Soraka draws you a lot of cards. So, like, you have, you have other stuff going on, but it's just the, the most obvious, straightforward, I guess, way to win is Star Spring Heal 22. Should have been a 5 0. -oh. oh, yeah, that's right. That's how we lost our first one. Was I, yeah, that was against, it was against the Trundle Trindamir that I had the opportunity to win. And uh, I, I missed the line. I saw the line like 10 seconds after I played the other card. So, yeah, I, that could have been a 5 0. -oh. That's right. I, I, had, I had a winning line that I just missed. And realized it right afterwards. That's right. So yeah, that could have been a 5-0. Alright, there we go. That's Soraka Braum, though. Pretty awesome deck. Real close to that 5-0. I forgot that was, that was our first loss there. Um, fun one to play. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. If you're trying it out yourself, if you play the deck, um, leave those comments. Let me know. I always love seeing them. Alright, but that's it here for Soraka Braum. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.